very good Sunday afternoon, my people. Let's start with part one, our breathing exercise. This breathing exercise is based on Taoist longevity exercise. Put your legs shoulder width. Naturally bend your knee. Your arms are as if you are hugging a tray. We'll breathe in with our nose out, our mouth as just take a deep breath as much as you can, okay? And this breathing exercise is really good for so many things. It's balance your immune system, lower your stagnation, lower your inflammation, and also help with anxiety, depression. And if you have autoimmune deficiency, this will also help. Now we'll move to our part two, our 10 energy movements. We'll do five each movement. We are opening up our triple burner. That's our fascia system. our immune system, our lymph. If people have lymph deficiency, this is a good movement to do. Make sure your hands touch the sky. Make an energy circle. In this movement, we open up our arm meridian line. Further balance our immune system. Detox the lungs and colon.
Now in this movement, we balance the whole gut system. Now, in our next movement, we surrender. If people have neck inflammation, upper spine inflammation, if they want to balance their seven basic emotions, We're balancing our heart system, our small intestines. Also, if people have intestinal inflammation and stagnation, this is a good movement to do. Now we begin to open up our dual meridian line, stretch out our tendon. We also open up our dual meridian line. Now we balance our liver.
this movement, if people have prostate inflammation, pelvic floor inflammation, kidney stone, kidney inflammation, and do this. Next two are longevity movements, forehead to the knee, and let's see how my tendon is doing now better. <laughs> The last one, forehead to the floor. Now let's all drink some water. I like to use the Meyer lemons just to put a piece of kind of lemon in my water. It tastes really, really good. So since this is our last teaching of this year, and uh, we will do um, as um, you know in the monastery toward the end of the year that one my master and give a little talk was always the same concept. Concept number one is that you really reflect the whole year, right? and um, uh, meditate more. And also, um, I want to introduce a concept of, we call that xuedu,放下. is, xue is, can be translated as give. And um, also, let go and do is, 
receive. So, sure. Um, the old times, when we have people that um, went into monastery and also just the regular clinic um, toward the end of the year, either the Taoist healing clinic or traditional Chinese medicine healing clinic or monasteries that um, if people are from very wealthy background and what we want them to do is we want them to change to, we call that Bu Yi. Bu Yi is, this is like Bu Yi, right? And because the wealthy people normally wear silk and uh, the monks and uh, uh, people like this, this is called Bu Yi. So it means humbleness. So we ask them to change to this and um, give them time to reflect before we treat them. And also we ask for donation. So um, because a part of give is that you give generously to uh, beings who are really in need of your support and help and help by doing that sure is that if you have no no willingness to give then you have no room to receive right so that is one of the concept we introduce to people and then the other is that certain things that we ask people to let go right um we call that fangxia is let go of your obsession let go of the things that um you when people have dampness in their spleen systems and they have they have obsessive thoughts right they many of the patients come in to seek uh help and treatment because they couldn't turn it off so we say that one of the very important concept really is let go let go of the obsession that right? you have to let go so let me give you an example so um one of the things next year that i myself will work on is that i have to let go of a obsession that this is um because of my training, right? My training started when I was a very young boy, three and a half years old, and day in and day out, year in and year out, you have this at least six hours training. You really train in such depths and details, right? And then my family on the top of that also provide a lot of training and then medical school as well. So, so, that becomes second nature, right? Then you automatically understand human body in a, in a very deep way, right? You just kind of know. Um, and then a lot of skill set that, you know, because of it's, it comes so, it becomes so natural. So I automatically, believe or think other people should have the similar abilities, right? When they went through their training, they should have known that. So, but that is really far from the reality. And, um, but still, you know, even I know the reality, but I still have that, couldn't really let go of that obsession of that thought, how comes you don't know this? And then that moment when I have that, not able to or not willing to let go then that obsession that that moment that becomes a something that um i think imbalance my liver system right then you become annoyed when people says well you know when you see someone's annoyed by something you know their liver system and their kidney system is not working together that well and then that will cause we call that xin is your heart 
that's where your spirit hold you where you hold your spirit me is lost so that is something that understand that and knowing that is something in 2022 i personally will be working on to really let go of that obsession if people don't know something I can just simply tell them, I can just simply teach them again and again and again, but have this understanding, not everyone has the same level of education or training or understand in such depths of traditional Chinese medicine. I just have to be working to find a way how to teach, right? That include my colleagues, my patients, my friends, my family, include all the beings that that comes my way so that's been said is that this is something that i know right you need to give you need to let go so you can receive and you can grow so i have come up with this idea so one of my friend grace and she gave me this jar as supposed to be for water or for something so i said look in the year of 2022, if I am unable to let go of my obsession of certain things and become annoyed, I shall each time, I shall put $20 in this jar. And um, toward the end of 2022, I want to see if this will be full and uh, maybe we can host a love train for a humane society. <laughs> and, um, so, you know, I checked their website and it says, well, it costs $2,500. So I said, oh, what's the problem I have at each time $20? Yeah, probably I will be able to at least host half of it. So, <coughs> so that is something that I would encourage you all to do, right? So you give, you have a spirit of giving, have a really understanding of let go of the obsession and then you shall be blessed and you shall receive. And, um, and the other thing is if people ask me about next year, so today I, today is the day you must look at next year, maybe we should begin to teach a little bit of uh, philosophy, a book of Confucius, um, Taoism, a little bit of Buddhism, and also a book of change. So you probably can't see this. So this, okay, this you you probably can't see. Well, you see, this is our next year's office policy. <laughs> so I shall explain to you what that is and that is from book of change so it's really cool because now we're getting traditional chinese medicine is such a way of life that you just have to go deeper and deeper and deeper to seek for the meaning of it it's really cool so i think that next year we'll begin to teach that and then also tell you that also if you put your energy says oh wow what you discovered and make the office policy make the you know kind of how the next year is to be maybe you want to be a part of it and study that with me and there's always six episodes six levels of things we can explain and i think we'll do that after the new year so and here that um, you have done well, all of you have done well with me this year because we have balanced different meridian lines and different systems and we have really, really worked on our immune system and reduce our stagnation in our liver, in our gut system. And um, I think we've done really well. So next year, and we will continue to do so. And I will leave room 
for more questions today. And happy holidays, year 2022. We shall have a great year. Uh, Dr. Liu, can you tell us a little bit about what you have written on that for 2022? Uh, it seems like there's a diagram and a symbol. I didn't. There's this book of change, right? And that in old times, that literally 5,000 years back and uh, before any kind of uh, significant event uh, that people will um, look for guidance. And um, so they will, there's 64 total patterns that will explain, I guess, the principles of universe, the principles of nature. It's called the book of change. And um, so that if you set up your intention and you just open randomly, or if you have um, a bamboo kind of a holder, and then there we call that qian in there, that you just shake and then one jumps out. And that is what you know, what you are seeking. And of course you have to, um, if you are Taoist priest, um, you will be able to explain that, interpret that to people, what that means. So that is one of the, one of the book that it takes years, 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 years of learning. So I'm still, I'm still a student of learning that book, this book of change. So that is the Gua 11, Number 11, I open it today, that just you know, present itself. So, and I think it's quite, it's been, I've been lately meditating on quite a few matters. And I think that really explore, help me to give up my obsession, right? Help me to understand the world better. Help me to understand how to move forward, how to guide, well, I probably shouldn't tell you, right? I just open up a book randomly and figure out, oh, that's where the director will be going. <laughs> so, but that is where, how we will lead next year. Actually, the 64 patterns are based on, you said, laws of the universe. Uh, I imagine, as you said, it takes a lot of learning to understand those patterns. Can you give us just an example of what are some of the patterns that one finds? So there's two basic things, right? This is the patterns on the top of it is the patterns of yin, you see? And then bottom part, or from the bottom part, that's the three, this three, these are yang, and top, there are in there are 64 different patterns. That means like there, I can spend two hours to explain what I learned from this. And there's one word under this. So what I learned and uh, from a different level. So I think that maybe next year I will spend a day or spend 30 minutes to explain what I discovered. Right, from how to deal with people, how do I think about the world is going, the country is not me thinking, right, but what they're telling us, what is it is going to inhale, and that's all in there, if you know how to read it, that's all. Well, but you have to have basic understanding of what it is, and I think that we will you know, this is something that I will give you something to read before I interpret that for you, because otherwise it doesn't make any sense. But I just thought it was a pretty decent one I got, and I got for all of you. So next year, in general, we'll have on. That's the bottom line of it. And of course, there are certain things we need to maneuver through. And uh, I think that shows us how to and what the strategies we'll be using. So I shall share that. I like that we are all under the umbrella of guidance. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, Dr. Lou, I want to go back actually just to Meyer lemons. So you had mentioned that you like to put Meyer lemons in the water. And recently I remembered that Meyer lemons are actually, maybe our listeners don't know this, but Meyer lemons are actually native to China and they were brought to the U.S. by, I think, an agricultural scientist in the early 20th century. Um, So it's somewhat of a newer fruit, I think, for maybe many of us. So can you um, tell us a little bit about... It's really have that very balanced taste. And uh, it, I think it's a crossbreed between a lemon and um, a uh, orange, something like that. I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert, but, but that has really, it can help you to detox, but also doesn't really uh, cause a lot of acid reflux if people have acid reflux. It's very mild and it has this really fragrant, really beautiful smell and taste to it. So California, now the farm that we recommend to you, and they, they just have, they, have, they just, they have that now and uh, um, it's in harvesting season. That's right. It's also the season for Meyer lemons, which is also really neat. And lots of, um, Dr. Lou, I was recently reading an article about some cancer preventive um, properties in Meyer lemons, which I think is just somewhat of newer research. Mm-hmm. Yes. So um, in the old times, and what we say is that when we detox, you get rid of the toxins and Meyer lemons. It's really throughout history. This is something I think that I didn't realize that in the US, this is a new kind of fruit, right? Because in Asia, in China, we've been using it for thousands of years to detox, to do the cancer prevention and then all other things. Yes, of course. You knew that, Dr. Liu. We're, we are learning that from you. <laughs> yes, it is newer for us. I've been referring to it as the king of citrus lately at my house. Uh, Dr. Liu, I really love your idea today of um, sort of spending this last remainder of the year in reflection. And I think, you know, for many of us, it's been a big year in many, many ways. You've helped us so much with just staying the course, keeping positive, keeping healthy. Uh, I'm sure I can speak for all of our listeners, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to spend your Sundays with us and for all the teaching and all the blessings. Just thank you. We're not done yet, but I want to make sure and add that in. So um, nature, well, like I said, we're a part of nature. When we together make nature out of balance, make nature ill, then in turn, nature will no longer able to bless us in the way that has always been throughout centuries. So we really enter a new territory of, we never seen this mass of massive of destruction that globally, right? Before it was just locally, right? The, the France and England have war, and China has Korea has war, and, and there have famine, but it's very local. And all oh, this land has been farmed to the bone, so they need to have 20 years of reset. And uh, but now it's global, right? We have never had so many people on Earth. We have never have the problems we encounter today. We never had it in our previous generations. And this is not just we are saying because we say, oh, each generation are saying this and we'll be fine and we are fine. And I don't think that is the fact anymore. I think that unless we together really create a small safe environment for ourselves, unless we prepare ourselves to really balance our health, to really balance our immune system, to really, because we've seen a lot of autoimmune deficiency cases. We've seen people's immune system instead of being the army to protect them, they actually betray the system, betray the body, right? But there are reasons for that, why? So if it's, if traditional Chinese medicine has always played a very important role throughout history, but if, if, if I emphasize anything, I think the emphasis is now, and it is crucial 
for all of you to know basic ideas of how to nourish your life. Because you, one day, you will be the advocate for health. You will be the soldiers for health. So it is that crucial, that important for you to understand these concepts. And um, I think there are people who have this calling, who are sent um, to teach. And um, um, I'm just one of the many, right? Because like Liu Zhu Huinong, that one of the very enlightened monk uh, in the Tang Dynasty, which is 1500 years back from today, and says that we all have that ability to heal. We all have that ability to be enlightened. But because our heart is covered with dust, because we have lost ourselves, lost, lost our way, therefore, there are many teachers are being sent to guide you back so you can regain your health, you can regain your well being. So that's really, I think, is, is crucial for for us today because my friends that one one step at a time right as globally that the difficult time is not behind us it's ahead of us but if we're prepared then we have we say confucius has a concept of saying you know what that is going to happen but we have no fear because we're prepared then we shall prevail. That, my people, is what I am here for. That's what I hope that one day you can be. We can just all maneuver through and then toward the end we say we can, we still have longevity, we still have compassion, we have wisdom, and we continue to have that courage, then we will live to tell the tales. Last Michael. I love that, Dr. Liu. Starts with health, but the journey continues on to so much more than that. I mean, really, what you're providing is really just guidance for living. That's wonderful. Um, Dr. Liu, I'm curious as we wrap up the year. Um, what kinds of practices should we be doing as we welcome the new year? Is there anything we do in our home in terms of like a feng shui perspective or what kinds of things can we do to be open to receiving? So now first remember the first concept is give, is let go and then to receive. It depends on what you want to receive, right? If you want to receive house, then you shall have either remember that piece of jade that you have or that piece of stone and um, east side of your house, right? Northeast side of your house and put it there. And it's important to clean up your house, clean up that mess to really welcome a healthier new year. That's important. And for us to do really every day is, are you doing your breathing exercise? Are you doing your energy movements? Are you sleeping for eight hours? Are you really, get a jar, Martin, get a jar, put $20 in. So, and we'll see who can host a love train first. So, um, so it just, you know, pick up a concept to say, this is what I will change. I will develop into a greater being, a more, um, uh, you know, a self-cultivation, right? I will cultivate myself into. Um, and then also the, the other thing is just always balance your kidney system. Whenever people try to scare you, you say, I know where we're going, I shall have no fear because that is not going to help. What is going to help is really to have, to nourish your heart so your heart will not be lost, to keep that sense of compassion. And that's very important. 
and to know we are blessed, that means we are guided. It doesn't really matter. It's not about religion. It's not about anything. It's about how we are guided through our own health. We say, through this healing, you shall find truth. That's what it is. So next year, we will continue to work together. And I can assure you, no need to have fear. And have love. Thank you so much, Dr. Liu. I'm not sure I can top that beautiful ending, but it does sound to me like you are encouraging all of our listeners to get a jar. Yes. Yep. <laughs> all right. Let's do, let, let's get that love train supported. Yep. Whatever you figure out, you um, want to work on, get a jar, and then together toward the end of the year, we'll host a love train somewhere. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Group energy. I love it. Thank you so much, Dr. Liu. Thank you. And have good holidays, my people. Happy holidays. There's many messages, Dr. Liu, coming through. Just happy holidays to you. I wish I can convey them all to you. Uh, just many, lots of gratitude, lots of blessings being sent your way, Dr. Liu. And uh, just thanking you for the beautiful message. Lots and lots of messages. Thank you so much.